Hey, Kowalski here. Welcome back to another video. Now in this video, um, you might have seen that uh, I've been away for a few days. Uh, in this video, I actually wanna cover the tournament that I've uh, been away at. And um, you know, I'll walk you through all the seven rounds that I played. And the thing is, uh, you know, I gained some yellow points uh, at the end of the tournament, so it was a good tournament. But uh, you know, not to spoil anything, uh, this um, video is titled how it is, uh, because you're gonna see why it's titled like that. The thing is, um, this are rounds one and two. This is disasters. Like this is disaster here. Um, the first game I played um, against, um, um, you know, uh, a girl, but she's like 1900, so it doesn't matter. Uh, like you know, she's really good. Uh, my elo is about 1464, like that. Um, I've actually gained. Um, of some 50 elo points actually so i might have to update that uh, um and um but uh, you know for, for the tournament my my rating was that so here we are with the black pieces and i've actually looked at uh, some of her games uh here uh she played e3 on on um on the move three here i actually you know i actually expected her to to be playing the move c4 and uh not uh, not e3 I, I had a note here that I, that I wanted to, to get back. Uh, so uh, here, you know, I was expecting C4 and, um, you know, uh, a Bogo Indian. So with like Bishop D2, Queen E7. Uh, I had this line prepared here, um, you know, if G3, I knew that you were supposed to take, for example, Knight F takes and now castles and D6 and play would go on. But the thing is, uh, I knew that she might be struggling against this line, but she played e3 at the board. So I just went d5 and, uh, you know, I tried to play for um, Fianchato. Here she played b3 and uh, kind of counteracting my bishop. Now the thing is, with this move bishop b2, after castles, now really the position is equal and I played c5, which allows her to go d takes and then I don't really have discoveries, but in the spirit of like a reverse Catalan, she didn't take, she went for uh, knight bd2, but now the position is equal. So now I decide to play the move knight to c6 to put pressure on the pawn and here she plays the move a3, oops, she plays the move a3 to not allow me to to get my knight into b4 and so here i take right so so far so good we got a very balanced position and uh i shouldn't do anything too outrageous maybe queen c7 right a natural move maybe b6 maybe bishop b7 okay my bishop is a little bit passive but okay uh, maybe a5 bishop a6 in the future no here um i decide to to try and be creative uh, i went knight back to e8 and this might not be the worst of moves but the thing is, uh, it's not good. Like here she just plants her knight in the center and here, you know, I try to go for my plan of attacking the pawn three times, but she, he, she just goes here and, and here it, it hits me like, oh no, I should take the knight. And here I spent like 12 minutes on this move, uh, thinking about taking the knight or not. And the thing is, I'm not forced to take the knight. I was just scared that she's she's gonna get the, the reinforcement. And and if I play this move right, she's just gonna take. And after I take, she's just gonna play knight f3. And now the pawn is ultra defended, and I am left with this weakness. And this position is not horrible. I don't know why why I, I view this position as horrible, but here I just took. And taking is a mistake, right? Because d takes, and now my knight goes here. Yeah, but now it's much worse. Because she's like, I, she doesn't have any weakness anymore, right? I don't have anything else to attack. And here I even play the move bishop d7, now giving her a pawn, practically. But getting some counterplay chances. So bishop c6, right? Um, some top engine lines here. She takes and I take. Uh, she goes in with the knight and now this is my biggest chance to get my advantage back. I got a bishop pair. Here I should be playing a move like bishop e4 and... Uh, or not bishop, uh, not bishop e4, sorry, uh, sorry, bishop e4, uh, not, not bishop d5, sorry, bishop e4, uh, attacking the pawn, and uh, the thing is, uh, you know, if you try to play f3, then I go for this move, bishop takes e5, right, because I, I shield um, 
the the rook from defending the pawn but here you know you have to continue with something like f4 and i didn't like the fact that she would get a protected pass pawn but okay maybe i failed to realize that i have breaking um options in the future so that's why here i went and played f4 myself but this just allows her to take my knight and now i have no more counterplay you see in this position i would have had the the the, the bishops lined up and um you know, just uh, after f4, you know, my bishop here has a very nice outpost and uh, I have in the bishop pair and that, that gives me some chances. But with f4, now now she just takes the bishop and now I'm just, I'm, I'm left with nothing. So here, you know, I try to, I try to like um, bring in my king after some improving moves. But I mean, you know, she's just up a clean, clean pawn here and my, my pawns here are just very bad and here I cannot even go uh, king d7 because of e6 check and she picks up the bishop so you know here I'm forced to, to, to go g5 defending the pawn but now rook c4 and here I have a last attempt uh, I play c5 because you know here there might be a trick if pawn takes and you might get bishop here and uh, bishop takes takes and now I mean at least I double her pawns even though she's a pawn up or um, you know i don't i don't really know what other tricks there are i mean that's what, what i was covering but simply rook takes and after this exchange right i mean she she's two pawns up and completely winning i try f6 but now the game ends very very beautiful uh, it actually resigns in two moves it's c7 and here i went back defending the pawn the, the guarding the queening square uh but now e6 check and i resign because i mean <laughs> you know, if I go here, then, then she just goes here, and and she's gonna promote something, and I'm gonna have to take. So that was the first round. That was just horrible. That was pretty horrible, um, to say the least. Um, I mean, you know, I just had a moment where I simply, I simply could have um, not taken the knight, and then had a normal game. Okay, going back to the second game, I had a double black. Uh, and uh, this game actually featured the same opening. Let's flip the board real quick. So I'm playing with the black pieces again, and uh, it features kind of like the same setup. But um, here, uh, right bishop before, I was you know thinking maybe my opponent is gonna play knight f3, but not really. So I prepped the line the all the way through to at to some point. I prepped the line. I had it at home, um, right? So this is like um, Nimzo Indian defense. And this is the main line, so bishop uh, b6, this is the sideline that I wanted to play. And uh, bishop d3 now, bishop b7, this is completely playable. But now this move, uh, knight d2, allows for a very nice variation. This variation has actually been played by um, um, uh, very good grandmasters, like 2700s. And um, black won some games. But uh, the thing is, right, uh, the line goes like this, and after rook g1, you gotta play bishop f3. I calculated this, but then I didn't know what to do after rook takes. But apparently, the, the correct move here is knight h5. And after the rook goes back, now you simply take the knight here, forcing uh, the double uh, pawns here, and now you go queen h4. Now putting pressure on everything, and apparently, um, black is much better in this position. But I didn't know that. 92 and now I just went castles now the the bar swings the other way castles and now after d5 it should be equal it's equal a three bishop d6 now this is equal so I got to this point right and I had everything ready and here he went b4 and uh, here right still sticking to the plan knight uh, sorry a6 I, I I knew that uh, if if he got b5 and we might have some trouble but here apparently just rook e8 and uh, b5 is not really scary at all because you can always play c5 uh, but i played a6 to stop b5 okay it's not a horrible move uh rook b1 and now simply knight bd7 right now b5 is not a threat anymore but now f3 trying to play e4 and here i i, I started to get scared i was like no, I cannot allow that. But here there's a game, right? Uh, the game continued rook b8, uh, played by um, some uh, 2500. And the thing is, right, with rook b8, you kind of have a chance here because e4 is not really possible. Why? Because d takes, f takes, but now uh, you have either the move rook e8 because uh, e5, um, you can actually take d takes bishop takes and now you can get some sort of attack with the bishops uh, although it's bad you can't do that 
but the thing is here you can also try to move c5 and the thing is after e5 you can go cd4 and if ef6 you can go knight f6 and still have the same attack but with a pawn here and uh, the thing is right you have to find the move knight a4 for advantage and the thing is it's not so clear knight g4 i'm coming with an attack but okay i had my attack and we're gonna see in the game so rook b8 was possible but first of all a rook e8 queen c2 and now uh this is actually david navara played with the white pieces um against the 2400 and that game continued bishop f8 which white won and i thought about bishop f8 but it just seemed like a very very bad move because e4 and i'm just getting steamrolled so uh, there's also another game that continued here rook c8 played between some 2200 uh but uh, the thing is with um, um rook um c8 i couldn't figure out the difference between rook c8 and rook b8 and so i spent some time here uh, to be exact I spent about 20 minutes in this position and I played rook b8. Here I also thought about queen e7 and the thing is queen e7 uh, really stops the move uh, e4 but then I saw this move knight g3 and uh, now apparently you have to find the move uh, g6 to still be okay which I didn't find because g6 okay stops the knight but it kind of still allows e4. But the thing is, you can take the knight now, and that's that's the whole thing. You can take the knight, and now you can actually take the pawn, right? So, you know, for example, like that. Um, and now, rook e1 or something. So, knight df6, and the game continues, and it's a much better position for black, more much more pleasant uh, than what was in the game. After queen I played rook b8, and now he gets the move e4. Okay, so I go D takes, F takes, and here apparently the move C5 completely equalizes the game. So like the move C5, and the thing is, he cannot, I mean, he can obviously play E5, but now CD4, EF6, Knight F6, we reach the same position. Um, but now, you know, Knight takes D4, but here there is, a, there is a key move, Bishop takes H2, King takes H2, and Queen takes D4. And now while I am down a piece, just look at the White King and look at my pieces ready to go here on the diagonals and the Knight. So I, I would have had an attack, but the way that I decided to do it, I went Knight G4 first. But this allows him to play e5, which is still good for me. Here apparently h3 just wins the game on the spot because you just attack the knight and uh, then if the knight moves, you just push. And if bishop h2 check, you just go king h1 apparently. But okay, um, here e5. And now uh, here apparently knight takes d5. Sorry, knight d takes e5. Uh, and somehow this is supposed to be the way to go because if takes bishop e5 and now I really have an attack. Uh, whilst in the game after e5, I went queen h4 and after h3, I took now, which is still kind of okay, but only if I take with the rook here. And I was scared to take with the rook because I saw the move um, bishop f4 here, but uh, apparently you have this move knight e3 and this check doesn't matter because you're actually okay in this position here. Oh, uh, bishop e5, bishop e5, and right, you, you, you like, you have um kind of uh what do you have two two pieces no you're down you're just down the exchange you're down the exchange and white's up one point of material but somehow it's okay because you have a lot of pressure here and um but in the game uh here i took with the bishop and now i'm just completely lost here i i kind of thought that i was mikhail tal for a second and i went bishop takes g2 oh my god i'm so smart but uh, actually i'm not because bishop f4 just takes 93 and the thing is it doesn't matter what i'm doing here i took the, the rook but in the end right he has three pieces three pieces for the rook i mean uh, two pieces for the rook is bad enough but three pieces i mean okay i mean somehow the pawns magically disappear like um maybe i could save this position but the pawns are just too strong and uh, the pieces combined with the pawns and now here I just make a final blunder to move b5 allowing rook takes and uh, here I'm just down uh, a full piece and I'm just gonna click the forward arrow there's nothing interesting to see here I, I thought maybe oh maybe I can get my pawns going but the thing is in this position I resigned um, 
But the thing is, right, if I go g4, he just goes here, and if I push, since it's not like he's gonna do some some moves like that, and, and then like this to allow me to get a queen, uh, uh, you know, uh, he's just gonna, <laughs> obviously, if I try to push, he's gonna go here, or, or make a queen, after all, he can just make a queen, so, you know, in the end, I was pretty unhappy with uh, these games, um, because, you know, I just played pretty bad and, you know, I had my chances to just completely be equal. Like, for example, right here where, with the move c5. This would have just uh, maybe given me the chance to equalize. But, um, you know, I mean, that's it. Uh, you, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. And, um, you know, I gotta, gotta, gotta stay, um, gotta stay um, active. I gotta stay uh, with a positive mindset uh, for the next games. So hope you hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, I'll see you all in the next one. Hopefully uh, a much happier video. Um, Kowalski out.